Hey everybody, my name is Tristan and this is the third video I'm doing for Signature and Nissan. I've just gotten out of my fourth week uh, on the class and we've learned a number of topics such as the weather, like sun, rain, snow, wind, all, all about the expressions. Um, we've also learned about transport, so car, bus, Running, uh, walking, ship, police car, underground, and that's what we got. And calendars as well, so yesterday, tomorrow. So with calendars, the time frames, everything to do with the back is to do with the past, and then everything forward is to do with the future, and then this is today and now. So seven is the number of seven, seven days in a week. You could do it last week, or next week, or this week. We could say last month, um, every year. Uh, what else we got? Good morning or good afternoon. So we have to greet David as we walk into the class every week. So we say, hi David, you well? And he'll say, I'm well, thank you. And he'll ask us to say, it's just a good game to practice it. Um, what else we got? We did uh, places as well, there's another topic. So it's all regional. We uh, you generally would spell out the place. So I live in Stockton, and that's the spelling of it. But that's the uh, the short way that you would describe it to people. Generally, you'd have to spell it first, otherwise they're not going to know what that means. Um, other things like who and what, where, when, how, why. Um, like you don't like. Uh, I think that's all stuff we learned last week. Uh, we've also got sight of the exam that we're going to be doing, which is going to be a short conversation, just saying hello, how are you, what's your name, are you deaf, um, where do you live, how did you arrive, what was the weather like when you arrived. So that's what we've been practicing for the last couple of weeks, and it's going really well. Something they also did uh, this week and last week is they brought in a previous student called Rebecca. Uh, I think she was a previous student and she's deaf. Um, it's actually really good to have somebody else there who knows what they're doing. They didn't bring out somebody else or there's someone out. And, um, so yeah, it's definitely useful having her there. The group of students that we've got there are right back as well. Uh, we've gotten really well as a group. Um, some of them are, e are even learning rude things, which I'm not going to repeat here. But it's not David teaching us, you don't have to open an investigation. So, you must be really sick of us by now. <laughs> Practicing at home is really important as well. So it can just take a bit of time just to get your speed up with all your finger spelling. And uh, it's something David keeps on asking us to do, please. Something that's overlooked is that it might be useful to do it in front of a mirror or on video because you can't really see what's going on if you, you think you're doing it right in front of your own face, but you don't see it unless you actually demonstrate it to the person who's who you're trying to communicate to. One of the most uncomfortable things as a hearing person, or for me at least, is the face, are the facial expressions. Um, with my dull, monotonous voice, you've just got like a flat level, but with other people you've got voices that raise and lower in their tone. Deaf people, they have nothing, so that you've got facial expressions or uh, body language. So that's why, for instance, with, uh, with the weather, you could say it's raining or it's raining or it's really raining. You feel like an idiot doing it for the first time. Um, I'm still a bit uncomfortable with it, but it, it just takes some getting used to. Uh, it can emphasize other things as well, such as I like that or I like that. <laughs> You feel a bit silly, but it's it's only silly to us because we're not used to it. It's actually a serious thing for, for yourself to use it. As I get more into learning the language, I get more of an appreciation of how we take hearing for granted. Um, I struggle to hear in noisy environments. I could be sat three feet away from you and I still wouldn't hear what you're saying. Well, it's really straining to hear. Um, it'd be great if people could just communicate back to me in some signs, even if it wasn't proper BSL. It would just be miming things with your fingers and painting a picture. Um, I also get involved in the award ceremonies at university where I work 
and we had a BSL interpreter on stage um, signing for our deaf student who was there. So you just take it for granted until you notice people who do struggle to communicate. I was also walking through town a couple of weeks ago and I saw three people communicating back with sign language. I think it's the first time I've actually seen it out in the, in the real world. Um, I was actually t really tempted to go over and just say I introduced myself really, but um, I felt a bit nervous and I thought I could just be barging in on their conversation. So I didn't, but uh, maybe I should have. Something else I do is if I'm doing something noisy around the house but I still want to watch TV on the tablet, is I'll put the subtitles on. It's not really related to sign language, but I can appreciate the similarities because it's difficult to follow two methods of communication at the same time. So try to read subtitles or sign language and follow what's happening on the screen at the same time. Uh, just makes you appreciate that the world is really revolving around the hearing community. There are perks though. You could be on the opposite side of a large crowded room, uh, which is really noisy, and you could communicate with another sign language person. Sign language person. Another person who knows sign language. Um, and just talk to each other across the room. Essentially in private as well, if nobody else knows sign language. So, you've got that going for you. <laughs> So next week we'll probably be learning about colours and rooms and directions. Uh, some of those will be on the exam as well, and we'll, yeah, we'll be preparing for that exam and doing more uh, practice. Uh, we're also going to meet up as a group as well, because we're going so well, we just thought we'd get together and practice outside of the class, which is really useful because um, I don't have anyone to practice with, nobody else around me knows sign language. And I think some of the others are, might be in the same situation or at least they don't, they don't have the time to dedicate to it. So that would be really good enough to do. So if you're still watching this and you haven't signed up for a class, then either I'm doing a rubbish job of convincing you, or you just need to go and do it now. So uh, try it out, and I'll uh, let you know how it goes next week as well.